Hello, my name is Chantel. Welcome back to my channel and thanks for hanging out with me today. So today we are talking about Islander 7 Third Beat Episode 22. So we're going to go ahead and get started since I still got to talk about one more episode to catch up. Anyways, you guys, so the first thing that we actually get to see in this week's episode is when Sogo talks with Tamaki and basically tells him the pros and cons about reconciling with his parents. And he also mentions how there's a risk either way and he doesn't want Tamaki to get upset and he doesn't understand why Tamaki got so angry last time when they were talking to Trigger about, you know, Sogo reconciling with his family. To which Tamaki responds that basically he says that it's not going to go the way that he thinks it is. And that it's also because he doesn't know that version of Sogo, which is like the rich, you know, upbringing that he's had. And how he finally understood Sogo when he said that he ran away from home because he understood what that loneliness was like. To which Sogo responds that he won't do anything if it would end up hurting Tamaki and that he won't make him cry and he promises him basically that he won't change. So this whole exchange was very, very sweet because these two are bickering, but even though they're bickering, you know, you could see that they're trying to come to an understanding and meet in the middle and again like i said in my past videos it just goes to show you how much mezzo has grown as a group and just how much stronger sogo and tamaki's bond has gotten over time and it also goes to show us that in the end tamaki is just afraid of seeing sogo get hurt like tamaki did and also because he's afraid that Sogo is going to leave him, which I feel like is natural when, you know, there's change coming about with your friends. You do get a little bit scared, you know, like what, how is this going to affect our friendship or how is it going to affect my friend and, you know, little things like that. And I can definitely understand where Tamaki is coming from when he talks about that loneliness. And, you know, we did hear him say a couple episodes before that he just doesn't want to be lonely anymore. And I'm sure right now he feels like Idler 7 and Sogo is all he's got right now. That's his family. So of course he doesn't want to lose his family. And the one thing that I really, really loved between Sogo and Tamaki's interaction was that, you know, first off, Tamaki could see like after Sogo came with like these piles of documents like in the end he saw that you know Sogo was thinking about him which is why he ends up telling Sogo like next time just bring me king pudding instead of documents to talk to me because it will let me know that you're thinking about me. And I think that's really sweet, but also it goes to show you that Sogo at the same time, like you could tell that he was thinking about it, but he didn't want to like appease him or seem, you know, like he just wanted to get something out of it. So I, I totally get both sides, but I think it's just really sweet how, again, these two came to an understanding and basically at the end of the day, they don't want to hurt each other or see the other one get hurt which I think is, again, very, very sweet. And moving on to the next thing that I want to talk about is Zul appearing on Next Rivale. So basically, from what we could tell, um, both Rivale's manager and Gaku's dad talking about Zul and Rivale is that Rivale needs to basically win against Zul while they're on next rivale because it will give them an advantage and it will also help Idolish 7 in the long run when they go against Zul for black or white. So they're trying to make sure that they get an even playing field because right now obviously they're at, at, at a disadvantage. So they're trying really really hard to you know take control before things get worse. 
which right after this, we actually skip over to Zul, specifically with Toma wondering if Rivale remembers him from his nomad days because he did meet Rivale while he was a nomad. And you can tell like he's anxious and he wants to be respectful towards Rivale because he mentions to the group, hey, maybe we should go say hi, introduce ourselves. But of course, the rest of Zul's like, why should we? And again, I feel like I will keep saying this every time we see a new episode with Eilish 7. Like, Toma is definitely just a sweet, genuine guy. And I really, really feel, especially towards the end of this episode, which I will talk about later, that he is the one that's going to get through Zul eventually. Maybe, you know, one by one or slowly as a whole group, but we'll see what happens, you know? Um, and it's so funny because here we have Toma wondering if Rivale knows him. And of course, we have Momo who remembers him, which I feel like is to be expected because Momo is just a social butterfly. We've seen that he is always introducing himself, wanting to make connections, and just a very friendly, happy, open person. And then you have Yuki who was like, no, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> which I think is so funny, but very, very, very much Yuki, which uh, of course Momo responds like, oh, of course you don't remember, and just like plays around and jokes with him. And of course he tells Yuki like, okay, just tell him that you remember him because that makes people happy when you mention like, oh, hey, I remember you, which Momo has a point. When people tell you that they remember you, or if you wonder like if, like, say you're like in Toma's position where you're wondering if someone remembers you and you're excited to see them again, and, but you're worried that they don't remember. But when they do remember you, it actually makes you really, really happy. So Momo, Momo has a point. He's right. When people remember you, it does make you a little bit happy. And of course, we see that with Toma because Yuki goes and says, oh, hey, Toma. I remember you from your nomad days and instantly Toma's reaction just changes. It's so funny and so adorable because you can see like he's nervous to go say hi to Rivale. But as soon as he mentions like, oh yeah, we remember you. He just like runs to Yuki and Momo and he's like, wait, really? Do you remember me? I'm so happy. Like, it's so cute. <laughs> and the funny thing is while this is happening, Minami and Haruka both agree that Rivale are kind of scary, especially since, you know, Yuki starts pinching Haruka's cheeks for being, you know, a little bit, you know, the way that Haruka is, a little bit rude. <laughs> but of course, Torao is not afraid and he actually is the one to take the lead for this part and basically tells them like hey if you don't do what we say or, or take our lead then you know we'll make you basically regret it and of course we do see that Torao basically kept true to his word and during next Rivale Zul doesn't say anything you know Rivale is trying to interact with them and talk with them but Zul isn't saying anything so they're trying to hold their ground but then you have Rivale, who are a natural at this, who can keep the show going with just the two of them. Like, it's nothing to them. So, they're so of course, when they go to a break, Momo tells them, like, all right, if y'all want to keep playing this game, go ahead. But me and Yuki can continue doing this on our own. So, either you guys sit there and stay quiet like statues, or you guys can join in and actually have a conversation with us. And of course, we do hear Haruka basically say, like, why should we even bother? We already won. And this is where Momo gets a little bit serious and gives him advice. He's like, okay, you think you won just by making people unhappy? Then you are stupid because that is just not the right way to go about things. And basically, Momo just puts Haruka in his place and basically tells him, you know, that it's childish of him to try and make people unhappy just to get his way. Like, that is just not how the world works. And again, it just goes to show you that Haruka, again, 
he is just a child. He is just throwing a tantrum at the end of the day. I know I said that like in my past videos, but like when Haruka does things like this, it just goes to show you like he is just a kid and he's just acting out out of anger because he was hurt. Does it make it okay that he's doing all these things? No, but I can completely understand his feelings and where he's probably coming from. But I will say that I really, really loved how Momo was able to handle all this, especially with what comes next, which they go on air and they basically end up talking a little bit with Zul, like Zul starts to open up a little bit, but obviously the atmosphere is a little bit awkward and weird. And they get to Torao basically talking about how he's like the number one sexy man at the time like right now currently and pretty much talks down on Ryu and Gaku which ends up making Yuki a little bit like you can see like angry or upset because he ends up going to Tora and, and is like okay but what about me what do you think about me since you say that you know Gaku and Ryu are nothing and you know all this stuff and how people who are on this list other than him were like unimpressive and stuff like that, right? So you can tell Toro's like panicking a little bit and he can't really take like Yuki's personality and stuff like that. Like he's, you can tell like he's kind of freaking out. So of course he ends up reacting to that and he's like, well, oh, I heard of that you're afraid of sharp objects. So what about this? And basically points like this sharp pen at him and immediately Momo comes in and sweeps and like basically stabs the pen on the couch which when this all was happening it happened so fast and I was like Ooh. like it was a little bit intense especially when you see Torao's face because it just cuts to his face we don't get to see where Momo put the pen right I honestly thought a little bit that he might have just poked him a little bit. But no, he just put the pen in between Torao's legs and basically did it to like scare him and make him quit. But also because you can tell like this made Momo angry that he came after Yuki's weakness. Like obviously that is not okay. Not okay. And you can tell Torao's like he doesn't care. He doesn't care what he does. It, he feel I feel like it's because no one's really stood up to him or he has never had any consequences to come with it. I don't know. But he really thought he did something, but of obviously he did not win this fight. He did not. And obviously you can tell that Momo is angry and he's trying to lecture them and stuff like that. And this gets Torao to back off finally and stay down. And after this, Momo goes obviously to go check on Yuki and make sure that he's okay because obviously when this happens, Yuki is definitely afraid and just, you know, you can tell like he is just not okay. Anyway, so this whole thing actually gets Minami to tell Torao to basically quit it and apologize to him, which Toma ends up backing him up and he's like, yeah, you need to apologize to Rivale later because that wasn't okay. To which, after this whole situation is like done and over with, things go normal. And, you know, things between Rivale and Zu are okay. And this just goes to show you that, you know, Rivale ended up winning this battle for now. And Zu ends up backing down, which is great because this is one of the things that Rivale and everyone was hoping for that they were able to win against Seoul during their time um, in Next Rivale. After the show is done, Momo actually approaches Zul and gives him his contact info. And funny enough, the one who takes it is Toma. Basically, Momo ba pretty much gives him their number and is like, you know, take it just in case anything happens. I know how Ryosan is. If you need anything or you need help, let me know, just call or text me and I will be there and answer you guys. And of course, we have Zul basically telling Toma like, ugh, like the right away, why would, why do we need it? 
It's not like we're going to need it at any point in time. And they basically don't care. But Toma, on the other hand, keeps looking at these little piece of paper with Momo's contact info. And I'm pretty sure that he kept it because even though like, the other boys are saying like, ugh, throw it away. Toma, you can tell like he's considering it and he's just thinking about something. And I'm pretty sure it's probably because of what happened um, a couple episodes ago or episode ago with Riku that, you know, he's starting to see like maybe this man isn't all that great, like, or he can see like the situation probably won't go great if he stays with Ryosan or something. So I feel like Toma can kind of see like, you know, he he definitely needs Momo's contact info just in case because you never know with Ryosan. And he also wishes that they could have had a proper conversation with Rivale, you know, about them and music and about black or white and stuff like that. Like you can tell like Toma generally just wants to talk about these things and music because I'm sure he didn't have this type of opportunity back in his nomad days. And now that he has Zul and has all this fame and stuff like that, like he's getting all these opportunities and stuff that he never did. And he just wants to talk to people about music and stuff because, you know, I feel like Tomo at the end of the day, he does love music and stuff like that, even though he said that he won't sing generally ever again. I feel like he definitely will and he's definitely going to get there at some point. And I definitely feel like Toma is definitely going to use Momo's number in the future. Who knows for what, but we'll see what happens. I definitely feel like Toma is going to be the one to, you know, call Momo and be like, hey, this is what's happening. Can you help us? But, you know, we'll see if I'm right. (laughs) And another thing that was interesting while this is all happening is that Haruka actually mentions that Ryo-san is actually talking about Riku non-stop and wants to know more about Riku and keeps asking Haruka about Riku if he knows anything and Haruka basically says that he's been really annoying with that and how every time everyone is always interested in someone else other than him and he obviously doesn't like that and is a very 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 much upset by that and it kind of sucks because it's like first you had Kujo with 10 and now you're having Ryosan with Riku. So I feel like, you know, Haruka thinks this is really unfair and it's like, why? What like what's I'm pretty sure he's thinking like, what's wrong with me? What did I do? Like I'm doing everything right. Like I'm in this dude's company and working for him, but yet he's taking an interest in someone else. Like, why? Um and again, like I said earlier before, Haruka is just a kid, so he's acting very much like a kid but also I feel like that would all be natural to react like that you know I feel like anyone would feel like that if you were in Haruka's place you know so again I can understand where he's coming from and how he's probably feeling anyway you guys so the next topic I want to talk about is basically about Nagi so we actually get to see Nagi for a brief moment and we actually do get to hear Mitsuki Yamato and Riku talk about Nagi and basically they wanted to cheer him up so they bought a figure for him and um and they mentioned how Nagi has to go to North Mare um more often basically like fly in and out because of some minor business that he has to get to and they're just kind of wondering and they're talking about North Mare and like how it is right now currently and how they're they're kind of going through a rough patch or something like that from what I remember Yamato talking um, because he said that he did a little bit of research or digging and he was like, oh, like this is what's going on in that country right now. And they're experiencing like some political issues, which is so funny because it's like, oh, like when they're talking about this, it's like, oh, <laughs> like, uh oh, like you could that like that was the vibe I was getting is like uh oh this has something to do with Nagi doesn't it and of course we cut to Nagi and he's basically talking and walking around with the guy that we saw um in the first part of third beat and we just basically hear Nagi basically tell him like 
Why do they want him if they distance themselves from his mother's heritage? And how he had to tell unnecessary lies to Idol 7 and everyone around them when he had promised that he wouldn't lie to his friends. And you can tell, like, Nagi doesn't like that he has to lie to his friends. Especially because we have seen how much love Nagi has for Idol 7. So, of course, this is going to upset him. And... You know, this is just a big old mystery when it comes to Nagi. Like, I don't know what to expect or what's coming. But the feeling and the vibe that I'm getting when it comes to Nagi, like, what's coming isn't great. And it's, I have a feeling it's going to hurt a lot. Because everyone's reaction when, um, from what I've seen online when it came to Nagi, everyone was like, oh no. And I'm just like, what do you guys mean? Oh no. Like, that just makes me even more scared and afraid to see, like, what's coming <laughs> for Nagi, you know? And moving on to the next thing that I want to talk about, which is Zul going out together as a group. So Toma actually invited Zul to go out together on their day off to, like, I guess, like, this butler cafe. That way they can get to know each other better and just, you know be a group for once but of course everyone is against this and Torao and Minami are the first ones to basically instantly get out of there they're like "Ugh, this is why you wanted us here like we're leaving so you know it's kind of sad to see that this is how Zul is like they don't really care about one another or bother to get to know each other because I feel like you know, when you're meeting new people, like, at least for me, like, I get excited and I want to get to know people a little bit and just, you know, communicate with them and stuff like that, especially if, you know, um, you want to become friends with them and stuff like that, you know? But, you know, here we have Torao and Minami who are just very uninterested and they're just like, eh, we're just doing our jobs, let's just keep it business only. And... The only one who actually ends up staying is Haruka, but Haruka only wanted to stay was because of all the sweets that he could eat. So he was just like, okay, I'm going to stay because I want to order some things. And then after that, we'll leave, which makes Toma a little bit happy because at least Haruka is going to stay for a little bit with him, you know? So during this time, Toma actually ends up asking Haruka why he wanted to become an idol in the first place and we hear Haruka basically say oh it's because I want to surpass zero and also because I want some people to admit defeat and of course Toma is like okay but what after that and he's like well I'll just laugh at my fans and stuff like that and then he's like okay but what after that what about in the future like farther down in the future to which Haruka like his reaction to that you can tell like that took him off guard and he's just like in the future like what are you talking about you can tell like Haruka generally didn't think that far along and Toma actually ends up telling Haruka you know things aren't gonna end there like once you're done with these things that you said that you want to do it's not gonna end there your life is still gonna continue on and then you're still gonna keep doing what you're doing so what is it exactly that you want to do in the future like what is your goal at the end of the day when you don't have those other things that you said you wanted to do and this actually gets Haruka thinking because it gets him to a point where he's just like what do I want to do so he starts questioning himself and I really hope that this makes Haruka change his perspective a little bit and not just think about revenge I get that he is upset and he wants to take revenge on Kujo and But at the end of the day, what are his goals and ambitions once those are taken away? Like, what is it that exactly that he wants to do? Why is he doing all this in the first place? If he doesn't have these things in the end, you know, what's going to be his motivation in the future? So I just think that's really interesting. And again, it just makes me certain that Toma is definitely going to be the one to get through Zul and make them change a little bit and I feel like that change will come if they all just sit down and generally talk to one another and actually try to make a connection with one another and just talk 
instead of just being like, ugh, I don't care about this, let's just leave. So I really do hope that Zul in the end will care about one another because right now they they really don't care about each other and they just don't feel like a group because you see that the, the way that they're acting with one another and then you have groups like Trigger, Idler 7, and Rivale who are, have these beautiful bonds with one another, which is so sweet and amazing to see. But then you have Zul who is like this and it just makes me a little bit sad. I'm not gonna lie. It does make me a little bit sad. And I hope that eventually they'll get to a point where they do want to get to know each other and they do want to, you know, have goals and ambitions and, you know, set for one another other than just revenge, you know? So like I said, I hope that this causes a little bit of a change in Haruka and hopefully we'll see what his dreams or his plans are in the future when he doesn't have revenge on his mind. Anyways, you guys, so now let's talk about the last thing that I want to discuss about in this week's episode, or this episode, I should say. Um, so the last few minutes basically focus on Sogo and Tamaki. So they decide to basically not tell anybody else in the group that Sogo is going to go visit his family. And the only reason why Sogo decided this is because he doesn't want to get anyone's hopes up or anything so he's just like taking precautions and it's like okay let me just go alone with Tamaki and we'll see how it goes from there and I really really do love that Tamaki joined Sogo and that was one of his conditions that he made with Sogo earlier in the episodes um after he talked with Sogo he was like okay if you're going then I'm going with you And I'm sure Tamaki wanted to go with Sogo just to be there for support and in case things go bad. Because you can tell Tamaki throughout this whole episode, and even now as they're walking towards Sogo's house and towards his father, Tamaki is afraid for Sogo and how things... He's just basically preparing for the worst and is preparing himself to be there for Sogo in any form that he can. So... I'm happy that Tamaki is there for Sogo to be there if he needs him to back him up or comfort him, um, however things go, you know? And the thing that was really interesting about this whole thing is that Tamaki actually mentions how his family is the reason why Sogo doesn't talk freely or speak his mind, but also because, you know, Tamaki knows that sometimes people don't change no matter what you do and no matter how hard you try to understand the other person sometimes people don't change and it's just the same cycle over and over again and I can kind of agree with Tamaki because I have seen this personally in my life where people will try to communicate with someone that they wanted to and wanted to fix things but because the other person didn't try to come to an understanding or try to understand the other person things got nowhere and it just cycled through over and over again so i can definitely understand tamaki's worries and honestly i am with tamaki on this one i am actually nervous for sogo and i don't know if his family is gonna change especially after the way that they treated his uncle I kind of have low expectations that, you know, things will go good. Like, I have a feeling they're not going to go well and it's going to take some emotional damage on Sogo. So, yeah, and we actually get to see Sogo's dad. And the first thing that he says instead of greeting his son is, how much money do you need? And I feel like that just made me sad because it's like, this is your son, that you haven't seen in a while don't you want to know like how he is or what he's up to aren't you happy to see him like why are you being so cold towards your own son like it just makes me sad you know the fact that he thinks that Sogo is there for money just it's really upsetting you know like that's not why your son is there like maybe he's there to check up on you or want to see how you are but the first thing that you say is what do you need? Do you need money? Like, it's, I didn't like it. It just, already the vibes are not great. And that's how the episode cuts off. So 
in the next week's episode from the preview, you can you can tell it we're going to see the aftermath of what's going to happen between Sogo and his father. So uh, we'll see what happens in next week's episode. But yeah, um, other than that, you guys, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing my overall thoughts and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!